<laughs> it's like, okay, so then where are you going with all this? You know, like what's really true for you? What's real? So it's an uncovering, I think. <laughs> So what happens when people go into the yoga studio? Well, when people walk into the yoga studio, they have to take off their shoes. They have to take off their clothes. They sit down on the ground, on the floor. And all of a sudden, like, they're revealed. And everything they might keep hidden or keep, you know, tucked away because they have to just survive, all of a sudden it starts to rise to the surface. You know, like how you really feel, what you really want, what's your true gift, you know, what's your, miles. what's Take your passion, to Fuller Avenue toward you know. North. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Take some a little bit deeper breaths here through your nose. And from here, you can just bring your hands right to your hips and your waist. Draw your elbows a little bit closer to each other. And then Exhale and go over to the right. You can move your hips to the left. If you want to lift your chin up a little bit, you can. And then come on back to the center. Stretch up. And just exhale over to the left side. Lift the chin a little bit. And come on back up. Let's stretch up a little bit more. And then just release the arms down. Shake them out a little bit. Shake out the legs too as long as you're and just come up towards the front of the mat. We'll bring the feet together so these big toes touching. A little space between the heels. And bring the palms together in front of the heart. If you want to just close your eyes here. Press your feet down a little more firmly. Connect from there all the way through the crown of the head. Park in Chicago.
Chicago, Illinois. And we just took Quinn Kearney's level three yoga class. And I'm gonna ask Quinn what he sees the future of yoga to be and how he sees himself impacting the future of yoga. What his dharma is, what his part in it is. Wait, do you want me to talk to you or talk, look at the camera? Melanie, do where do you want him to look? Let's do this. Ah, I'm the camera. You mean to <laughs> should I talk to Lisa? Yeah. Or look it. at her? Is that the way? To, is that the best? Like that? Yeah. You That's can, better than yeah. You don't want you don't want me looking. Right yeah, right. At that. That's you can like, like you occasionally know, like you know look over here. It's that'll for a dramatic be effect. But yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okay. okay. So you got you got me at the right at the beginning of class looking at my iPod quite a bit. Like you that. have you some be amazing this? music. You like some wow, of that? Wow, I that really, was, that really. That was an old playlist. But a was, lot of things that I, I have. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, That's she's cool. she's a master engineer. She she huh. recorded Sade and Madonna oh, really? and Talking Heads. No. You're she's really? like this diamond that just kept in underneath the... Mm -hmm. Wow. Right, we're not so she cool. got me backstage with Sade. We're not oh, talking about me I was partying with Sade. That's so cool. That's great. So what do you, you do? You do Remember? producing? I mean, so you did the recordings? I, I was a recording engineer for 10 years in New York. Oh, and, right. Yeah. Oh, so that's I, great. So you, you I see love some, music. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. fun. The whole cultural thing you mentioned. I can't wait. Okay, sorry. That's okay. And How plug, much time do we have? Chicago. So I don't um, keep you too long. I, what, do, what do we need? I mean, I can do. I just said, I'm supposed to play tennis at four. 15 minutes is fine. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. That's fine. That's so, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Quinn Carney. And you're the? And the owner, one of the owners of Yoga View in Chicago and Wilmette. And how long have you owned the studio? Uh, we've had Yoga View now, we opened in 2002, so it's been 12 years now. And you started teaching yoga, how many years have you been teaching yoga? Um, I started teaching yoga in 1993, so it's been, believe it or not, 21 years already. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've been doing this for a long time. So what do you see the future of yoga as? The future of yoga is very open-ended, I think. I mean, yoga has changed so much in the time that I've been doing it. It's like, it was, it's, in terms of the culture around yoga and everything, it's, there's, it's almost unrecognizable from today compared to what it was in the early 90s. And I don't, it's hard to say exactly what the future of yoga is going to be. Um, I do think that it's, there's a reason it's become so popular. Because for many years it was kind of very underground. It wasn't, it was something that only like hippies and, and real freaks would do. <laughs> and now it's very mainstream. It's in all, all the cities have all kinds of yoga centers all over the place. And I think the reason for that, at least part of the reason for that, I think, is one, yoga is great and it really works. And there's, there's something unique about it in that people, the, the focus of it is really getting in touch with yourself, getting in touch with your body, finding a certain kind of simplicity in that that I think we all really need these days because the world's changed so fast and it is changing so fast right now. I mean, really, you know, because of technology and what's happening, we don't know where it's all going to go. But I think there's a kind of a growing need in society these days for some kind of simplicity and, and, and some kind of return to nature, if you will, even though it's not, you know, necessarily, especially in, 
an urban environment like Chicago here, you know, it's not nature and the trees necessarily, but doing the asana practice and yoga is, is kind of a way of getting back in touch with your own nature. And it's a way of, you know, at least, at least temporarily during a yoga class, everybody's not on their cell phone, not on the computer, not hooked up to the World Wide Web, um, at least that World Wide Web of technology. So I think it's a break that people really need and seem to seem to want these days. Mm -hmm. So what do you see your part in it? What is your how do you how are you going to impact it? What's your dharma? Like what's your personal purpose? What's your professional purpose? And what's your global purpose? That's a big and good question. I feel like my personal purpose with it is to try to figure it out as best as I can, you know, because I am, we're doing, we do a lot of the teacher trainings at Yoga View here, and, and so we, I think about this a lot because we're teaching other people to teach, and I think it's really important what happens in terms of yoga going forward. And I don't really know, like, I don't have a clear sense of what it's going to look like, because like I said, it's, it, it doesn't, it, it's changed so much already, so it's hard to know really where it's all going to go, mm -hmm. and it's very confusing. Right? Because, you know, there's this whole commercial aspect to it. There's a lot of old aspects of yoga that are only very recently beginning to be questioned, in, including the actual history of yoga. So it's kind of interesting, I think, to try to look at what the actual history of yoga is in terms of what the future of yoga is going to be. And to be honest, there's been a lot of misunderstanding about what the history of yoga is. Really, I mean, Mark Singleton's book, The um, Yoga Body, mm -hmm. is really, I think, going to change, has really changed the modern yoga world, or is starting to, anyway, because he did a very academic study of, like, what, you know, what the real history of yoga is, and it's not as, um, as long as people think it is. Interesting. In terms of the history of the asana practice, really. I mean, we were talking about yoga, in this sense, I'm talking about, you know, the asana practice, which when, when we refer, when we say yoga, that's what most people think you're talking about. I don't mean the, you know, the other part of what is yoga too, which is kind of questioning, you know, who are we and what are we doing on the planet, and asking these bigger life questions, which have been asked since human beings have had the capacity to do so, really, you know. But in terms of the asana practice, it's very, it's really a lot newer than people think. It's not this ancient system. There's no record of anybody doing anything that resembling like triangle pose in the way that we're doing it today, you know, that long ago. Mm -hmm. So the real tradition of yoga, the way I see it these days, is it's completely innovative. I mean, that's what I feel like the actual history of yoga is. It's been changing, it's been adapting for years. You know, the actual origins of it, a lot of people feel like it came from India, but it's really more a back and forth between um, you know, Europe, America, and India, and that's really how a lot of it developed mm -hmm. um, through that. So I think there's a lot of room, I think, in yoga for it to, to change. And I think now within, in the modern yoga world, I think a lot of ideas are just beginning to be questioned. You know, there's all, you know, yoga has adopted this whole, um, you know, guru-disciple idea. And I think that's starting to be questioned. Um, a lot of the philosophy that's been associated with yoga is is really changing very very rapidly mm -hmm. if you look at it. So what inspired what, what was your what was the trigger for you to start yoga, Quinn? I started yoga because uh, um, actually the spiritual teacher that I was with was really into yoga and and he got me uh, got me interested in it. So we started practicing a lot together. So I want to go back to the idea of, of you. Like Thanks. What, yeah, I didn't really answer your question. Because so. <laughs> I know it's a big question, but I think it's, it's important because that's why I'm doing this. Because okay. I see, you know, you guys, all of us, as the new leaders just sort of stepping up. So I'm curious to know if, if you've ever sort of looked at what your personal gift is, like your personal dharma, mm -hmm. what your unique soul gift is, and then how you... Uh, employ that in a professional way and then how you can affect the world on a global level because I think you are <laughs> that's why I'm here <laughs> okay um, 
Well, thanks. I yes, I mean to to answer your question about like what my personal feeling is and response, what I feel is a responsibility with it. I think it's in terms of going forward, it, it's really trying to keep as much in mind as possible. To try to be basically as mindful about the future of it as possible, and to try to you know make it all as authentic and based in reality as possible. Because I feel like the yoga world, you know, as wonderful as it is, there's also a lot of uh, a lot of superstition. A lot of a lot of like unexamined beliefs that people are holding on to very tightly in some circles. There's a lot of almost like fundamentalism in the yoga world. These are the things that I think are going to change. And I think what I feel for myself is, you know, I'm trying to encourage people to question some of these ideas that I think are not really being questioned or that could be. And the more, and I, I think science is helping, you know, I think science is going to come into the yoga world a lot more, just like it is with the, in the meditation department these days. You know, they're doing all kinds of studies that show the benefits of meditation. Mm -hmm. So with a lot of these, these practices, it's going to get, I think, in time more grounded and more um, based on, you know, what, what feels more like a concrete reality that people can look at independently and, you know, see the same thing, or at least, you know, see and understand all the different perspectives that everybody has. So that's really what I feel is kind of my role with it, is to try to be as understanding as possible and to try to use, you know, whatever level of intelligence that I can conjure up in myself to, to figure out, like, okay, to be discriminating and to say, like, this, okay, that seems to make more sense. You know, whether you're talking about alignment in a pose or philosophical ideas, I think it, it applies to all of it. So what do you love about it? What do I love about it? I think the thing I love most about yoga is it, it just it's the renewal aspect of it. Because I feel like when you do a good yoga practice, it feels to me like you're, you're restarting your whole system. Mm -hmm. Your mind, your body, you're kind of like, you know, taking everything down to the studs and like rebuilding yourself in a way. So you feel refreshed. So I'm always amazed because I've been doing it for a long time, but a lot of times right, when I practice, it feels like a good practice. I'm, I, I'm always, I constantly come back like, oh wow, I still, this is just really fun. <laughs> it's inherently good, just a good thing. So um, what, how can you encourage people when you, when you look at a really great yoga teacher? Like what qualities would a really good yoga teacher, really great yoga teacher have? I think the qualities of a really good yoga teacher are, it's a little mysterious, it's a really good question, it's hard to really identify what makes somebody a good teacher, but I think a lot of it has to do with, with getting out of the way. In other words, like the teacher on the one hand needs to like completely, you know, be there and be completely present in the space, but you also need, the yoga is bigger than any person. You know, I know a lot of people are trying to like have their stamp on it and like this is my system or my style but I always feel like it's kind of funny doing that because I feel like the the kind of current or the force of yoga whatever that is is really bigger than anybody so I feel like good teachers have a way of on the one hand being completely present but in doing that they have a way of like letting that get through to everybody in the class or whoever they're teaching mm -hmm. somehow and so it's a little hard to know it's hard it's hard to train people to do that, but that's what we try to do, you know, when we're training teachers, and that's what I try to do teaching, and I do think that's what makes a good teacher, is somebody who, who creates a certain kind of space that allows everybody to have their own experience of yoga, because it's a very, yoga is a very personal thing, it's different for everybody, it gives us what we need at different times, and and somebody who can create the space for that to work for everybody, I think is really what makes a good, good yoga instructor. And um, inspiring kids and teens to practice yoga, what can you say? What can I say to inspire kids and teens? Um, hmm. That's a good question. I don't know, what, what, what would do it? I mean, you know, I think, it's hard, that's a, that's a really good question because I think with, depends on the kids, you know, it depends on what the, where they're at and what they're doing. 
but again, like uh, somebody who's I think good at, at at working with yoga can will figure out. You have to figure out what's gonna what's gonna hook them, what's gonna catch them, you know, and then present it that way. Mm -hmm. You need to. It, it's very adaptable. So you need to figure out like what what's this group of teenagers? How old are they? What do they need? You know, and then and then to kind of make it make it fun for them because people don't yoga should feel good and be kind of inherently fun, yeah. but it's hard sometimes I think for for teenagers right if they're if they're busy and you know to get them to slow down enough I think it's it's probably difficult. Well, what was your hook? What hooked you? Mm, when I when I first got into yoga. Um, I think what I really liked about it, I was really surprised when I first got into yoga because I always thought at that point that yoga was really all about flexibility and I was like a younger guy when I first did it and I, and I, I was really struck by how much it had to do with strength and I thought this is kind of very cool, you know, and, it's, and it, it felt very empowering, I think. And I think it was part of what got me into it. Mm -hmm. Good. Any closing remarks? That was really good. Is that okay? Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anything else. Um, How do you feel about like? Does it irritate you when when you you're a yoga studio owner and you've got like these big corporations like, you know, Core Power Yoga and Lifetime? Or do you think that's just there's just enough room for everybody? I think there's enough room for everybody. I do. <laughs> um, but I feel like. I, you know, I, we're still kind of the mom and pa yoga studio, and I, and I think there's something really valuable about that. And I think people will appreciate it, especially in a more urban environment. I think there's enough people that still want to, you know, go to, say, cafe streets to get their cappuccino as opposed to Starbucks. But Starbucks is good. I mean, I go to Starbucks when I, there's nothing else around. but you know, I like my cappuccinos from Cafe Streets more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice analogy. Okay, good. I was pulling that one out. I was like, wait a minute, where am I going to go with this? Um, okay, good. Those are good, good questions. Is that okay? I was trying to like repeat some of the questions. I've done the, the couple times I've done this before. I remember like they were like depending on how you want to use it. Sometimes that. alignment, the strength, mm -hmm. and Tao's not about that at all. She's about the Shakti, she's about the flow, you know, mm -hmm. and, and up until now, you didn't integrate yoga and dance, mm -hmm. but the reality is, and this is where I think yoga is going, is that yoga and dance, or yoga and innovation, you're going to see more of that, and that's why things like chakra dance and be moved are becoming, are coming on the scene. You know, because that's how yoga is changing, in my opinion. There will always be, you know, your classical asana classes that focus on strength, alignment, and flexibility. But there's this whole new space for people to be free. And, and that's, you know, Eric Schiffman's Freedom Style Yoga. That's why I like it so much. Because he offers, he teaches, you know, your basic asana in a very intelligent way. But then he, he opens up the space for this free form time where you just like move the way the spirit wants to move in your body. And I love that. And so, you know, people like Tao, I'm glad that she's, that she's coming, but I think it's, it's a statement that she's coming to Yoga View. And that gets me really excited. When I first brought in Be Moved at my studio, 
a lot of teachers sneered at me. And they're like, you kidding me? It's like, what? Well, that's not asana, that's not yoga. No, it's be moved and you should try it. <laughs> You'll smile and make you happy. <laughs> anyway, 